Hey, what's going on, church? We're so excited that you decided to join us for these daily devotionals. And if you got your Bibles, I want you to open up with me to 2 Corinthians 13. And we're going to read verse 11. And here Paul, he is closing out his letter to the church. And this is important because it's the last thing the church will hear from this particular letter. And it says this in verse 11. Dear brothers and sisters, I close my letter with these last words. Be joyful, grow to maturity, encourage each other, live in harmony and peace, then the God of love and peace will be with you. I love this verse, church, because you can really hear his pastor's heart for these people. I mean, Paul, he knew these people. He knew their pain, and he knew that for so long they were under siege from the world and the flesh and the devil. And as Paul, he kind of wraps everything up. He chooses to encourage them to do four things, four things that he wants them to pursue. And I feel like these four things can empower the church today. Now, before I give you those four things, I want us to notice what he doesn't mention, right? He, Paul, he doesn't tell the church to pursue these things. He doesn't say prosperity. He doesn't say success. He doesn't say physical health or comfort. He doesn't talk about honor or prestige. All those things are important, church, but Paul, he doesn't list those things. The first thing that Paul mentions to the church or encourages the church to do is he encourages them to be joyful. Joy is, it's a beautiful thing. It is. And I'm not talking about happiness. Look, happiness is a feeling, but joy to me is an outward rejoicing from an inward satisfaction that I know Jesus Christ and what he's done for me. Come on. In other words, I can have joy at all times because I know what God has saved me from. Can I get a good amen? I mean, I don't know your story on the other side of this camera, but I know my story. And I know my God has saved me from things like addiction, from self-harm. I know my God, he has restored my past and he stands with me in my present and he has a plan for my future. Come on, I can have joy today because when I woke up this morning and I took that first breath that I, that, that I knew that God wasn't done with my story yet. Come on. And Paul, he tells me, he says, be joyful because even when you're walking in the valley, you realize that you're not walking in that valley alone. Come on, don't make me preach this, y'all. Somebody say joyful. The second thing that he encourages the church to do is he encourages them to grow to maturity. How many of you know that we are all a work in progress, right? None of us are perfect. We would never reach perfection, but we can work to improve the weak areas of our life. I look at it kind of like remodeling a home, you know? My wife and I, when we get away from the kids some weekends, we'll go and we'll go out of town and we'll get a hotel room and, and just kind of spend the time just exploring the city that we're in. And when we get to the hotel room, one of the first things that we do, and this might be kind of weird, but we turn on the TV and we turn on HGTV and we watch those house flipping shows. Now, I don't know why we do it. It could be because we can't afford cable and it's the only time we get to watch HGTV, but we love those shows because when they flip those houses, church, it always looks better on the other side. Like you watch these uh, contractors kind of work on these houses and there's been time invested in these houses and the improvements have been made and almost every house on the show, it looks better on the other side of those improvements. Well, the same thing goes with our spiritual maturity. The more you and I strive to strengthen our relationships with God and improve the areas of weaknesses we personally have, the better we will be on the other side. And the great news is that we don't have to be Mr. Fix-It because God has given us the Holy Spirit who is here to help us with our growing and with our maturing. Come on. The third thing that Paul encourages the church to do is he encourages them to encourage others. Look, you and I, we know we live in a world of negativity, right? I mean, I know I noticed that it's been getting to me a lot more. I've had to take more mental breaks away from social media. I know social media is a great tool, but can also be a poison with the negativity that's in it. And so I've had to do that more. And I think about all the negativity going on in church. I realize it's our responsibility that our words could, should be a, a source of encouragement to those around us. In a world where people take pride in ripping everyone down and tearing everyone down, we as believers have to be different and choose to use our words to build others up and help them in their Christian walk. Like I said earlier, 
You need to know today. Like, I'm here to tell you today. Look, if you find yourself in a valley, just like I said, you are not in a valley by yourself that Jesus is there with you. I want to encourage you with these devotionals and with these words. The fourth and final thing that Paul encourages the church to do, and it's the, one of the most important, is he says, live in harmony. In other translations, it says to have the same mind. Now, Understand, church, this doesn't mean as Christians we should be cookie-cutter uh, cookie cutter images of each other. We shouldn't be robots, right? What Paul means here is that we have the same mind because of Christ. You see, it's Christ who unites us to one another because he is the head of the church, and it's our love and our obedience to him that unite us on this earth as a church family. We know the enemy's going to always be there to try to create division in the church, but it's our job to guard against it. That's why you and I, we have to be the example to the world out there by striving to live in peace with the people around us. Because in closing, we got to remember what Jesus said in John 13. He says, that is how this world will know that you are my disciples, by the way you love one another. Look, times may be different, church, but our responsibility has not change. Can I get a good amen? Come on, do you receive that and believe that with me today? Look, if you do, I encourage you share this link with someone. Hopefully this Devo can bless and encourage someone else. And like always, don't forget, if you need prayer, leave your prayer request in the comments. We'd love to pray with you. Look, we love you and we'll see y'all back soon. 